Hello everyone. Hope everybody's having a good day. We got people that are starting to show up here. That's fantastic. And I'm going to be working on some wooden signs. I got um, an order that I have to have done for the weekend. So I thought while I was working away, I would pop on and uh, we would work on them together. I'm doing my uh, Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer technique and it's my favorite way to make signs. If you've been following along, you know that I use this all the time. I've tried lots of other different techniques for my signs. Always end up coming back to this, the, to this one. It's my favorite. Most affordable. All it takes is a little bit of patience um, to get the feel of how to make them, but once you master that, the possibilities are endless with this. So, if you're just joining, let me know you're here. Let me know where you're watching from and um, I'll just chat away. And if you have any crafting questions, ask away. And if I can help you out, I will help you out. Uh, I did these up yesterday. They've been sitting, they're completely dry. I put uh, the graphics on with my Mod Podge mat. And I'm just gonna take my damp spray and just dampen it until the graphic shows through. And then just rub the paper off. So we have Long Island, New York, Iowa, India. Wow, welcome everybody. And these uh, signs that I'm doing today, most of them, these are actually some of my most popular sellers at Christmas for gifts. Um, I've just made these on scrap pieces of two by four actually. I stained them with some of my homemade, sta um, homemade stain and then I put a couple layers of my homemade white chalk paint and then the graphics on top of them. A lot of these are lost love, loved one themes, heaven theme. They are really popular sellers, unfortunately, but they are um, because people like to get them as gifts. So that's what most of these are today is that theme. All these graphics that I'm using are available in my Etsy store. If you wanna make some of these for yourself, then you can grab them. What do we got here? Kansas City, Western North Carolina, South Africa. This always blows me away when I go on these lives. The reach that we have here on YouTube and how many people we can gather together. Um, crafting friends from all over the world. It's just amazing. Caught alive again. I have signs and painted stuff drying right now. Awesome, Jen. Okay. It's kind of dreary here. We're actually could be getting some snow flurries. The first uh, little bout today here in Ontario, Canada. So I hope the coloring is okay here and the lighting here in my room because I don't have very much natural light today. South Florida, much warmer there than here. Welcome. Okay, this little sign is snowflakes are kisses from heaven. This is a really nice little quote and of course very first sign that I do and I'll show you what happened the very first sign I hope you guys can see maybe I should um, bring the camera down just a little bit this piece of wood had a knot in it and uh, when I was rubbing the graphic the graphic came off so I'll just show you and that can happen if your wood is not completely flat then it's really easy to rub the graphic off so this one I'll probably just put aside and um, probably repaint it and do it over again. But you have to be kind of conscious of that and obviously I wasn't, but there was a little knot right there. So we'll go on to the next one. Always those things happen on a live, right? Uh, I have become a fan and today I did my first decoupage five minutes ago. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. I love um, hearing people that are just trying all these techniques out for the first time and learning all these new little tips and tricks and I'm glad that I can help out along the way. And I love decoupaging, love decoupaging with my napkins, especially making signs. Um, if you haven't checked out my last couple videos, I just did a video, I think it was last week, on how to do a photo transfer on an inkjet printer. I know so many of you guys 
don't have a laser jet printer, all you have is an inkjet. Uh, the technique has been around for quite a while, but I kind of had hit and miss. It would work sometimes, it, wasn't, it wouldn't work sometimes. And I kind of perfected it, for me anyways, of what worked the best, and I did a tutorial on it. You can look it up and it's uh, inkjet transfer, uh, inkjet photo transfer, and try that out. If you're looking for ideas for Christmas gifts, take a photo, do that transfer on a piece of wood or on a piece of painted glass and they make fantastic Christmas gifts. Okay, this one's much better. There's no knots in the wood. And this is another lost loved one quote, but it's really pretty. I like to take the top layer of paper off with a little rag and then finish it off with my, um, my fingers. And if you're just joining in, let me know where you're from. And the other thing is I have brand new, a newsletter that's coming out every week. If you haven't signed up for that, I'd love to have you follow along over there. Uh, be lots of updates in the newsletter, free graphic every week. Um, that uh, will be in the newsletter and I'll have other discount codes and stuff like that for my Etsy store so the link actually is in the very top of the comments here and when you're done watching you can go over and uh, sign up for that so you don't miss just the free graphics in itself is fantastic and all you have to do is just sign up with your email and then I'll send emails to you with the free graphics and all my updates and what I've been working on and I'm just taking my fingers and just rubbing off that top layer of paint. Um, sometimes you can use a palm of your hand. I've gotten pretty good at this so I know how hard to rub and what works and what doesn't. Okay, that one is finished. So I'll just show you this one. In life we love you dearly, in death we love you still. In our hearts you hold a place that no one else will fill. Such a beautiful little quote. And I'm gonna seal all of these with my polyacrylic sealer. I use a water-based polyacrylic sealer and I like to use the satin finish. Let's grab it down here. Uh, in this one. And it just seals it off really nice and finishes it. So as we go along, I'll just put a top coat on them. What have we got? Serbia, Europe. My goodness, we have such a range of people from all over the place today. This is wonderful. Okay, that one is done. We're going to put that aside and work on... These little sizes are um, great little shelf sitters scrap wood it's actually i think this scrap wood if you go to your local home depot or your lowe's a lot of times they'll have a bin of scrap wood or cut ends that they you can go in and you can take for free and i think that's where this stuff all came from but they sit really nice you can put them in a tiered tray um put them on a little cabinet this one says wipe your hooves and it has a little uh, picture of a moose and that would look really cute at the front door on a little table if you have a table at your front door. Okay, Utah. Good morning from Arizona. Arizona, you're in a different time zone. We've already had lunch and you're just getting up. Welcome. And anyone that's in here watching, let me know if you've ever done this technique and if you've been successful with it. And... Uh, what your favorite way to make your signs is. This is definitely a little bit messier because you have all these little bits of pieces of paper, which I find all through my whole house. It sticks to my clothes and I carry it through everywhere. Um, this is a really popular one too. Just the white your hooves. You can kind of feel that the paper is just about rubbed off. And then you know you're ready to put your top coat on. 
And if your, your wood is a little bit raw, uh, rough, then you do run the chance of rubbing off some of that graphic, but I don't mind that because then it just kind of gives it more of that rustic, rustic look. So that one's good. We're gonna put a top coat on it and keep going. Here's another one that's a great shelf sitter. This one I did was some black chalk paint and then the white chalk paint on top. What printer did you use for these? Okay, so this is a, a good, great question because I get less, this asked all the time. I do most of my transfers with my laser jet printer. I have the best results with a laser jet printer. That being said, you can still do this transfer with an inkjet printer. It just takes a little bit more um, patience and you have to be a little bit more careful rubbing off because the ink does tend to rub off easy. In my um, post feed, I put a link this morning because somebody had asked me this exact question. I put a link to an Amazon laser jet printer that I have that has been fantastic for me. So if you go back to that post, uh, you can check that link out. And I'll also put that link down below in the description after I air this live. Um, I have a laser jet black only. That's all my laser jet is too. My laser jet is not a colored one. I only have black ink in mine. I do have an ink jet that's colored. So if I want to do uh, any photo transfers or anything like that with color, then I'll switch, I'll switch to my ink jet. And, um, I usually don't have too many problems doing the inkjet transfer. I have a video of a photo that I did of my husband and I. You can go back and check that one out. And it was done on an inkjet and it turned out really nice and crisp and it worked really well. So you don't have to have a laser jet printer. But when I'm doing so many signs, um, it was worthwhile for me to have the laser jet opposed to the inkjet because the inkjet does take a little bit longer to rub off your signs. How do you apply the paper to the wood? The paper is, or the paper is um, applied with Mod Podge Matte. That's what I like to use the best. It's put on the paper. You have to make sure when you're doing this technique that you reverse your text. If you don't reverse your text when you put it on your sign, it's going to be backwards. Reverse the text, put a light layer of Mod Podge on the paper and then lay it down on your piece of wood. Now I've had a lot of people say after they do this technique, I've got a ridge all around where I put my graphic. Probably what has happened is you've put your Mod Podge on too thick. Mod Podge is a glue and when it dries, of course, you're gonna have the thickness of that glue on your sign. So less is more. You don't need very much to do this transfer technique. If you're putting it on too thick, that's where you're gonna get that line all around your graphic. Um, just curious, have you ever tried decoupage vellum? I haven't, and I actually don't know if I know what vellum is. Anybody tell me down below what it is? Must be maybe a type of paper. Um, I have all the supplies. That is fantastic, Nancy. Let me know how you make out. I tried to do a search and didn't find anyone that had tried it. It's like tracing paper, but a little, oh, okay. I haven't. I have not tried it, but it's kind of interesting. I'll have to do some research in that too and see. Translucent. Hmm. Yeah. If anybody here or any of my followers knows anything about vellum, decoupaging vellum, then let us know down in the comments and uh, help us out. And this is another lost loved one. A piece of my heart lives in heaven. It's a nice one. And what you can do with these, because I only, because my laser jet is only black ink when I'm printing out these graphics um, so this little heart is black you can if you would like to have a little bit of a pop of color you can go in and you can paint this little heart on top of it with some red paint and that looks really nice too and then after everything has dried you can seal it up with your um, polyacrylic sealer okay how much time do you wait after applying the Mod Podge when you apply the Mod Podge with the paper Set it aside, do not touch it until the next day. It has to be completely dry. Uh, if you try to do this process without it being dry, 
it will rub the graphic right off the, the wood. So the drying time overnight is um, very critical with that. Can you do a tutorial about pricing your signs? I get stumped on pricing sometimes. Um, I can. It's kind of, that. that is kind of difficult because I'm in Canada, so of course our dollar is different than yours. Um, and I, I find I, I have some friends who live in the city and make our sign makers and what they can sell their signs for compared to what I can, I'm in the country can sell my signs for is uh, a completely different market. So it's kind of like really difficult to know. I think the best thing to do with that kind of thing is go to Etsy and just kind of search for what you're making and see what they're charging and then kind of do something comparable to that. And that's probably a good guide for how you should price your items. Vellum tends to bubble and warp when it's glued. Okay, so somebody has used vellum and said that it wasn't that easy to work with. Love your videos. You have such wonderful tips. Thank you for doing these. Just joined your channel yesterday. Welcome, Dana. I am just completely blown away by the love and the support that I am finding on my channel here. It hasn't even been a year since I decided to, I do this full time. My YouTube channel is full time along with making my signs and everything. And um, about a year, well, not it'll be a year, I think in February, I decided to do this full time. And I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. I'll see how many people are really gonna wanna know anything about what I'm doing. But I did know that I was really good at making these signs, so I had something to offer to help people out. So I thought, I'm just gonna give it a try. If you go back and you, if you've been here for a while and you go back to my first probably 10 videos, they are cringe worthy. I didn't know how to edit. I hardly knew how to film. The content is really good because what I was doing was um, a good craft item, but my actual filming and editing and all that kind of stuff was junk. So don't judge me if you go back and you look at some of my older videos uh, in this last little bit. I've learned so much and I've learned better editing and better filming skills. So. Hopefully now you're enjoying my videos more than when I first began and started. Okay, this is another memory um, sign. And if you're just joining in, I at the beginning of the um, live I was talking about my newsletter. If you want to sign up for my new my newsletter, uh, head over. The link is in the very top of the comments and join me over there because every week you'll get free graphics and you don't want to miss out on that kind of stuff because we all love free graphics to craft with. Okay. And when I'm doing signs um, for retail, I find you want to stay away from painting with too many different colors. My best sellers are always very neutral white and black so if i'm making something for somebody for a gift and i know they're colorful and they have or i know their color scheme in their home then i will add some color to it but for any retail stuff i stick to the very basic white brown and black and that way it will fit into anybody's decor and it sells a lot easier okay just keep rubbing away. Anybody on here that has had difficulty with doing this technique, um, just let me know and I can probably help you out. I've had some people that will join me over on Facebook because you can send photos over there. So if they're struggling with doing this technique and, and uh, they've sent me a picture, all I have to do is just look at it and I can usually say, yep, yeah, this is what you've done, try this, and usually we can sort it out. So. If you're having any problems, that's a great alternative to head over to my Facebook page and uh, send me some pictures. Okay, we just about got this one completely rubbed off. Some videos that I have in the works, or, or actually a video that I did yesterday, did everybody catch my video on how to paint spindles fast? If you haven't seen that one, go and check it out. I have a 
hoard of spindles in my shed, overwhelming actually, because I collect them along the way. And I was trying to paint them with a paintbrush and I saw this little hack on YouTube and I tried it and it's game changer for painting spindles. So make sure you check that one out. I, that was uh, posted yesterday. And then coming up through the rest of the week, next uh, for this week, everything that I painted the spindles with, I made into some tiered trays and tiered bowls. And I have that tutorial coming up tomorrow. Created some fantastic tiered trays and bowls that you don't want to miss for that one too. Well done. You can be proud. Love your videos and always an inspiration. We don't have all the products that you have, so I am experimenting with some of those place. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes with crafting, it's just trial and error. And a lot of times I've learned some of these techniques by mistake just by, you know what, I've ran out of something. Well, let's try this. And it ends up actually probably working better than what I was trying to use in the first place. Okay, this one is, I think this one, yep, is a coffee sign. I've made a bunch this size, all coffee related. Actually, I've got uh, one, two, three, four. And these ones are great for tiered trays or a coffee bar if you wanted to make them up. For Christmas gifts, they make awesome Christmas gifts too because most people love a cup of coffee and they would love a sign. This one says, give me coffee. Today here is definitely a coffee day, dreary and dark. And it's rubbing away here. It's really hard this time um, with everything that's going on and the wood prices has been so expensive to buy wood and make signs. I'm fortunate that most of the wood that I get for my signs, we have at our dump, we have a wood pile where everybody can throw their wood in and I can go in there and I can kind of sort through and if there's any little bits and pieces that I can turn into signs, I'm bringing them home with me because it, but you, it's so hard to pay for the wood and then make signs and get your, if you're selling them, to get your money back out of them. So I always do a happy dance when I can find free wood. Um, Deidre, I wanted to know if I can do this method on a plate. Yes, actually, oh, I had one. I think I've taken it out to my shed. Yes, you can do it on a plate, but you can't do it just on the plate itself. You have to have a base of chalk paint. This technique will not work unless you have, won't work well anyways, unless you have a base of chalk paint, like really absorbent paint for that Mod Podge and paper to stick into. Otherwise, when you, if you just put this on a glass plate with some Mod Podge and then you went to rub it off, it would just rub right off the whole plate. So yes, you can do it on a plate, but paint it with some chalk paint first. Actually, what I, what I would do if it was a glass plate I would give it a little bit of a spray of some um, white chalk or white spray paint, just a light spray that will give something to the chalk paint to stick to, and then paint the chalk paint on top of it. I'd put two coats on, let it dry really well in between coats, and then do this technique on top of that. And you shouldn't have any problems at all. Just don't put too much water on when you're uh, when you're dampening your paper. Um, do you have different memories that say, uh, do you have different memories says I missed the last one you had done? If you, when this is all done, if you go over to my Etsy store, I have a whole section there of all heaven quotes and you can go through and you can check them all out. They're all over there and you can check out and see all the different ones that I have. The other thing that I like to do with those little memory co uh, quotes is turn them into little Christmas ornaments. I cut little pieces of MDF board into little rectangles and then I'll put the memory quotes on them and put a little piece of burlap on them and uh, they are fantastic gifts for somebody that's lost a loved one or if you're selling retail they sell really really well. Uh, I went to the Home Depot and their bin was completely empty. Dana, somebody like me was already there ahead of you <laughs> for the free ones. 
Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, I might have to paint it. Yeah, if, if you're going to do the glass paint, then I think kind of the only way that you'll be successful is to have that chalk paint base. So it probably won't be usable. Well, you could use it if you did, gave it a really good spray of like your engine enamel. Um, you could use it and be able to wash it with a damp cloth, but as far as like putting it in the dishwasher or anything like that, I've never had very much luck with that. Even with the Mod Podge dishwasher safe, I found it doesn't really stand up that, that right. And Dana, I figured. <laughs> There's always somebody that's looking for free wood, so if you were around here near me, I would probably have been there and beat you to it. I'm always looking for free wood. And this is another coffee one, bright and early coffee and tea. I actually, right before this live, I took these four, oh, we'll finish these two too, but I took these four coffee graphics and put them all in one Etsy listing. Um, so you can grab all four of them in one and then you can make little shelf sitters with them if you wanted to check that out. This one, this bright and early coffee, I've made these into really big signs and uh, they look really nice if you've got like a coffee bar in your home to do on a big sign and then hang it up above your, your um, coffee bar. And we're just gonna rub away. Where is everybody watching from? Let me know. And this one is not going to be successful because I had a knot in the wood um, and it's rubbed that and right off. So as you can see, these aren't, aren't always perfect. I've been doing these for a long time, made a lot of signs and they don't always work out. So if this happens and it doesn't um, rub off very well, I just like to take the majority of the paper off and then just repaint on top of it. Don't throw your wood out. You can always just repaint and make another sign on it. So we're gonna set that one aside. And we're gonna do another one. Rise and shine, it's coffee time. Uh, Alabama in the US. I really wanna figure out how to reverse the words on my computer. We want to make a sign for a dog's grave. Okay, so, um, Sherry, if you go into my playlist, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial taking you through um, how to reverse your graphics. So I'll put a link down below in the description here what in this airs um, if you don't find it and you can find it there. It's really, really simple to reverse your text. It's, it, I shouldn't say it's really simple. Once you figure out how to do it and you can find the little buttons to do it, um, it's really easy to do. And that tutorial will take you right through step by step on how to do it. Alberta, Wild Nature Farms. Hopefully you aren't too, um, you are far away from all the flooding up there. We, on our west coast in British Columbia, we're having some awful, awful flooding in, in, inland and uh, some devastating stuff's going on for some people up there losing their homes and lots of flooding. Lori, around, around Hugh, South Carolina. Welcome. This one's rise and shine, it's coffee time. Again, another great sign for a coffee bar. Okay. And if you're, if you're watching and um, a regular viewer and you have some sort of a crafting project that you want to learn how to do and you can't find a tutorial on my channel, um, let me know and maybe that's something that I can do a, a tutorial on on my channel. No rain, we're thankful to get our first snow. We had a, uh, we had a terrible record breaking drought this year. I know you guys out west have had a really long summer with the drought and now all this flooding up in um, BC. It's been devastating for a lot of people. Okay, this one looks good. 
nice and rustic sign that's going to be perfect for a coffee bar. I'll put a coat of polyacrylic sealer on this, set it out of the way, and we'll go on to the next one. Oh, and this looks like it is a, another heaven quote one with the black background. And this one says, I wish heaven had visiting hours. And again, this one has a little heart on it. And like I said before, my laser jet printer only prints in black. So if you wanted and yours is the same and you don't have a color laser jet printer, you can go in with a little paintbrush and paint that little heart with some red paint before you sealed it up. Uh, love your work and your graphics, Marie in Sweden. Thanks, Marie. Now that things are starting to open up and we can travel a little bit, I have Europe. My daughter and I love to ta travel and we would take a trip once a year and that's kind of gotten shut down. So we're hoping very soon to be able to do that again. And Sweden is on my list to visit. And just rub all the paper off here. Okay. My sister-in-law just lost her mom during all this crazy to see. Do you have a nice quote for someone who has lost her mom? Yes, I do, actually. there's. I think I have about 10 or 15 in my Etsy store, all different um, quotes on having lost a loved one. So you can check those out because there are some really pretty ones. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to put a top coat on this one. Seal it up. I'm really fortunate. I have a local store that um, I'm able to sell my signs to, so I don't have to worry about shipping. Here in Canada, our shipping costs are really expensive, so by the time I went to ship a sign and do all that kind of stuff, it, it's way too pricey, so I'm fortunate that I'm able to do that. Thanks, I got a pile of wood scraps waiting me for some love. Perfect. Nothing better than a whole pile of scrap lumber. My video that's coming out tomorrow, I actually, because it's getting chilly here and I'm not able to, I usually work out in my shed all the time and now that it's too cold, I'm back up in my craft room. My to-do list, my to-do pile was huge. So uh, tomorrow's video is tiered trays, tiered bowls of all of my pile, not 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 all of my piles, a, a big pile of stuff that I had. Um, and I finished them up and made them into really cute projects. So you'll have to check that out tomorrow. Um, loving your bottle videos too. Yes, I do a lot. I, I don't throw any glass jars or bottles out. I do this technique on all of those too. And uh, there are some of my really good sellers too. Just have to make sure if they're glass that you're painting them with the chalk paint and uh, getting a real good coat of that on before you do this type of a transfer or it won't work. Um, you only put polyacrylic on your transfer and not on the rest of the wood. Don't you need to seal the wood as well? That's to actually your preference. Um, you can seal the whole sign if you would like. I just kind of like that rustic look and that bare wood. So I only just seal my graphics, but that's just my personal preference. You can seal your whole sign if you want. If your sign is gonna go outside, make sure you're sealing it with a polyacrylic sealer for outdoors and seal the whole sign, back, front, sides, and everything. But when these ones are just gonna be inside, I just use a regular polyacrylic and I just do a top coat on the top. But again, that's just my preference. Okay, this one looks pretty good too. And this is a really nice quote. In life we love you dearly. I think that was the same one. Yeah, I've already done that one. So that's a nice quote. Get those little bits and pieces of paper off. 
you get really good at this when you've done so many that you can feel underneath your fingers whether you've got all the paper off or not. And is everybody here full bore into Christmas decor? I'm not yet. I've started doing my Christmas um, signs and stuff like that, but as far as decor in my house, I kind of have this thing where I don't like to do it until December 1st. I kind of like wait almost to the last minute. But come December 1st, I put everything all up. Okay, put a coat on the top. And we'll go on to the next one. I'm trying to find something that I haven't done yet. Here's another quote. Have I done this one? Nope, I haven't. Oh, yes, I have. I wish heaven had. It's hard to see through these with the paper, uh, which ones I've done and which ones I haven't. I wish heaven had visiting hours. So this is just like the last one that I just did. Hello from Northern New Jersey. December decorating here too. Yeah, I just, I, I don't like to push the season. I like to kind of leave it till December. And I am actually on Monday, I have not, my daughter lives out on the West Coast in BC. And she has been here to visit a couple times in the last year and a half since all of this COVID stuff, but I have not been out to her place. So I am leaving on Monday to go for a week holidays to visit her. So I'm so excited about that. So I'm not going to do any Christmas decorating until I get back. Yes, and all you guys from the States, you haven't had your Thanksgiving yet. So I know a lot of you do your decorating after Thanksgiving, which I think is next weekend. We've had ours. Ours is in October. So, and also my daughter is also a thrifter. We love thrifting together. So if you would like to see um, a video of some of our thrifting finds, our thrifting finds, that's hard to say, um, let me know if you'd be interested because I could definitely put a couple videos together of all of our excursions when I'm out there and thrifting around at their stores out there. Okay, that feels pretty good. Got all the paper off of that one. Next Thursday, next Thursday is the Thanksgiving in the States. Yeah. So you guys will all have a really nice long weekend. Okay, I'm gonna put the top coat on this. Set it aside. And I'm not sure what this one is. This one is a, oh, a snowflake one. Snowflakes are kisses from heaven. This is like that first one that I did that had the knot in the wood that didn't uh, turn out. So let's cross our fingers that this one's gonna come out good. And this is just done on regular computer paper. Uh, you don't need any fancy paper, just regular computer paper, laser jet printer, and print them off with some Mod Podge. Now I have, uh, I did a comparison video where I made a stencil on my Cricut and I did this technique and I compared them side by side because I have never done a stencil on my Cricut and I wanted to see what it looked like and whether I liked it or not to maybe try doing some signs with that. Uh, so yeah, I, I did the video, I compared them side by side and I was actually really impressed. The stencil was actually really, worked really well, but it was kind of labor intensive and I find that this type of sign I can do so quickly um, so yes please okay I'll do a thrifting video so stay tuned next week for my daughter and I when we do some of that BC is underwater it I know my uh, my daughter is just outside Vancouver she is fine but her husband is a um, he is a filmmaker and he is in hope and he is stranded there and he was actually filming a show there and um, they've been trapped in the, they've been trapped in the city and he can't get home so it has been very devastating and uh, they're making the best of the situation but it's gonna be a long time before everything gets cleaned up but uh, I think we will be okay where I'm heading next week okay 
Okay, that one feels pretty good. Snowflakes are kisses from heaven. We have some snowflakes. And we'll do one more and then we'll sign off for the day. And so if you have any, um, yes, post your thrifting videos, please. I will. Yes, they are lots of fun. Okay. We'll do one more and then we'll sign off. And I'm not sure if we lost everybody. Hmm. Oh, no, we're still here. Um, I'm just gonna do this last sign and then we'll finish it off. So if you have any last minute questions, just let me know. I should make a snowflake one. My 21 card deck just played her first snow one. She loved it. Aw. <laughs> and Wonder Staples prints and laser print. Need to check. Yes. If you do not have a printer, you can go to Staples and um, have them print it for you and size it up. And that works perfect. Those we love don't go away, they walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near, still love, still missed, and very dear. And that's another really good one. How do we sign up for the newsletter? If you go to the very top of the comments here, there will be a, um, a link up there, and you can get the newsletter up there. Okay, this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna seal it up and then uh, we'll finish up here. So thanks everybody for joining in and watching today. I hope I've been able to help you out and answer some of your questions and um, we will see you in the next video. Take care guys.